Hi, and welcome back to the Cross Training Women Weekly Live. I'm Allie, Christian Health and Fitness Coach and the founder of Cross Training Women, where I help women transform their body and health physically so that they can live fully and abundantly and carry out their God-given purpose. I don't know if you know this, but tomorrow is the first official day of fall. And so I thought today I would share a fall recipe with you guys. Today I'm gonna to be making an easy pumpkin zucchini curry recipe. So if you love pumpkin, you love zucchini or curry, and you're looking for recipes that will help you lose or maintain weight and just optimize your health, then this recipe is for you. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut up this little teeny tiny onion. <laughs> Uh, I'm only gonna be making about one serving. It might make me a little bit more than that. And so if you are making this recipe and you want leftovers, you are making it for multiple people, then you're probably gonna want to uh, double this recipe, at least double it. So I'm just gonna chop up this little onion here. And as you join, please just say hello in the comments. Let me know who's here watching. And let me know if you're excited for fall and fall recipes. Let me know if you love pumpkin and zucchini and curry. Let me know in the comments. Thanks for joining me. If you don't say hello, I don't know who's here. All right, I'm almost done chopping this up. Sometimes when I cook these recipes, I like to have this stuff ready to go, so it just saves some time, but it's such a little tiny onion. I was like, it's not gonna take long. All right, so I'm gonna add this to my nonstick, 100% ceramic nonstick cooking pan. The brand is Green Pan. So you wanna be careful with the types of uh, cookware that you use because a lot of them have toxins. So. What I did is I just added a little bit of water to the bottom of this pan and I'm going to be sauteing it in water. I don't use any oil. Oil, if you guys have been following me, you know is the most calorically dense food on the planet. It's 4,000 calories per pound. And so anytime you are cooking with oil, you're eating oil, you're adding a ton of calories and those calories are all from fat. And oil is so processed that there's not really a lot, of, there's little to no nutritional value. In fact, it can be harmful to your health. So for me, no oil when I cook or in any of the products that I buy. Uh, so if those of you who cook with oil and you're using a tablespoon, you're adding at least 120 calories, 120 calories of fat. And so an easy way to eliminate that is just by sauteing in, in water or using a little bit, bit of vegetable broth. It's it, it tastes great, you won't miss it at all. I can promise you that. And it's going to save you a lot in calories and help you with your health and fitness goals. So I'm gonna be adding a garlic clove to this. I'm just gonna add one of this I got from Trader Joe's. They're already peeled, so you can get that at the grocery store. It just makes it a little bit easier. And I've got this little garlic press that I use all of the time. So I'm just going to add this to my sauteing onions. If you like a lot of garlic, you can definitely add more. And then while that's cooking, I'm gonna chop up my zucchini. Now, I was gonna use one zucchini, but it's kind of small. So I'm thinking I might add two zucchinis. So this might make a little bit more than one serving for me. Otherwise, I could totally eat two zucchini, no problem. So I'm just gonna chop these up real quick. And you guys are not gonna necessarily be happy with me, some of you guys. Some of you guys will really like it, and if you don't like it now, eventually you will, but for this recipe, I'm not gonna be using any measurements. So with my spices, with the pumpkin that I'm adding, I am all just gonna be kind of sprinkling and eyeballing stuff and putting it in. So once you 
do that, I promise you it's so much more freeing and it's so much easier to make recipes because you're not double checking the recipe multiple times, wondering how much you should be adding of each thing. You just kind of throw things together. It just makes it a lot quicker. There's less things to clean up. So I'm just gonna throw this around a little bit. So turn it down slightly. And then with, when you're sauteing with oil, or with water, what I like to do is I like to keep like a little cup handy of water right next to my stove. And then that way, once the water starts evaporating, I just add a little bit at a time. You don't need to add a ton, about a couple tablespoons. So the water is pretty much absorbed right now. And so to prevent it from sticking and from really browning, I'm going to add a little bit more water. I love the smell of onion and garlic cooking. All right, and now I'm gonna add some of my spices. So I've got Indian spices, we're doing a curry. So I've got some coriander, I've got some garam masala, I've got some cumin, got some turmeric, I've got some ginger, and then I've got some extra little curry to add on top. But these, I love curry spices, and there's so much health benefits to adding spices, especially Indian spices like turmeric to your meals, ginger, they're both really anti-inflammatory and add a lot of antioxidants. So I love cooking with Indian spices. So I'm gonna add a little bit of ginger, and again, I'm not gonna measure anything, I'm just gonna sprinkle it on. So I'm gonna guess that it's an eighth or so of a, I'm gonna add a little bit more water, starting to brown, and my garlic ginger is, uh, Sticking a little bit. I'm just gonna use my fork here, break that up a little bit. So I'm gonna guess it's around an eighth to a fourth of a teaspoon that I use. Okay. Next, I'm going to add in my curry or my cumin. So again, same thing, just kind of sprinkling that in, giving it a nice generous amount. You can add a lot more if you like more spice. So good. All right, then I've got my coriander. I'm gonna use a little bit more of this because I love coriander. And then garam masala. You can never have too much spice, so don't worry about it. So it's all good. Some turmeric. And then lastly, I'm gonna add in some curry powder. All right, add a little bit more water here, mix it up just slightly. I'm gonna add in my zucchini. All right, get that going. Other ingredients here. I uh, got some oat milk that I made earlier today. So I'm just going to add it. Again, I'm not going to measure it out, but if I had to guess, it's about a half, maybe a half of a cup, a fourth of a cup. And then I'm going to add in some diced tomatoes. And I'm going to just add in about half of a can. Okay. And then I'm going to add in my pumpkin puree. So I've got a can already open. I'm just going to add probably about what's left in here. Let's see about how much that is. But again, if you like a lot of pumpkin, add a little bit more pumpkin to it. Probably, let's see, maybe like a fourth of a cup of pumpkin, about that. And then I'm just gonna stir that together. Have you ever made a pumpkin curry recipe before? Let me know in the comments. Okay, 
So I'm just gonna let that sit here for a little bit. Now, with this, you can add other ingredients if you want. You could add some bell pepper into it. You could add spinach into it. You can add garbanzo beans. So I think I'm gonna do that this time. I'll add a little bit of protein and some more nutrients. I love beans and I'm just going to rinse off my beans. That's something that I do all the time. So I'm just gonna open this real quick. And I actually, I love this little um, strainer. It comes in three, three pieces. There's a little top to it, which is really nice. So it's like 10 bucks, but it's awesome because if you wash off your, whatever you're washing off and then you put it on the countertop, it just gets like water all over the place, right? And so instead you can just put it in here and it saves your countertop. And then if you want to put it in the fridge, you can just put the lid on and stick it in there. So it's really convenient. It's just a great size too. So I'm gonna wash off these garbanzo beans, these chickpeas. And I, I buy um, no salt added beans. Um, that's definitely something I recommend because the sodium can really add up. If you don't have no salt added beans at your store, they're a lot more expensive, rinsing them off can help get rid of some of that sodium. So I'm gonna wait to dump this in just a little bit. Smells good. Some other things that you could add in here are lime juice. I like to add lime juice to a lot of my curry dishes. You could add, if you wanted it to be a little bit sweeter, you could add some maple syrup or some date paste or date, uh, date syrup. Another thing that you could do if you want to make it a little bit sweeter is you could even add a little bit of pumpkin pie spice on top. So, okay, I'll go ahead and I'll add my chickpeas. I'm not going to add the whole can. I'll probably add about half. So I'm going to save the rest, put the lid on top, and I'll put this in the fridge later. Now with the zucchini curry, you can eat it with something like naan or what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pour this over a bowl of pre-cooked rice and quinoa. So I'm just going to nuke this in the microwave and then I'm gonna add my curry on top. Another thing that is delicious in curries is sweet potato. Of course, I believe that because sweet potato makes everything taste better. So you could also, if you wanted to have some pre-cooked sweet potatoes or you wanted to add it in here, it's gonna take a little bit more time for the potatoes to cook, but you could certainly add that. Or if you have a pre-cooked one, you can um, cut that up or roast it beforehand, throw that in there. I've got uh, sweet potatoes cooked in my fridge. And so sometimes with curries, I'll de-skin it and I'll just mash it up and, and put it in, in the curry. And that's always really good. So this is a pretty, it becomes pretty thick, like more like a stew, which I like. Um, again, just depends on how much almond or how much plant-based milk you put in it. I use oat milk because it's a little bit uh, less calories, a little less fattening. So I use oat milk, but you can use whatever plant-based milk you have. So yeah, so a lot of curries, they use coconut milk, but I rarely ever use coconut milk anymore just because coconut milk is full of saturated fat. And so I prefer to use other types of plant-based milks when I'm cooking. And so you probably just want to keep this on the stove for about five, seven minutes. For time's sake, I probably won't cook it that long for you guys. But again, you can kind of taste test it and then just adjust the seasonings. If you need to add a little bit more of one spice, a little bit more curry spice, you can certainly do that. I always like my vegetables a little bit more overdone. So if you like them a little bit more crunchy, then you definitely don't need to cook it quite as long. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments. I'd be happy to answer them for you. Yeah, 
Yeah, so it looks like a lot of food, but honestly, I could eat this all in one serving. But I'll probably save some, especially because I added the beans to it. All right, so for time's sake, I'm just going to show you what the pumpkin curry looks like. Delicious. I'm going to add this to my bowl here. Get my spatula. If you want, you can add a little bit of salt on top to really enhance the flavors. Otherwise, if you're salt free, like, or you're trying to reduce the amount of salt, you can just leave it. Just add some more spice if it needs some more flavoring. But there you have it. Easy at pumpkin zucchini curry. If you like this recipe, give it a thumbs up, tag a friend in it, save it for later and make it. Let me know if you do, take a picture and let me know how you like it. But hope you guys enjoyed today's recipe and I will see you guys back here next Tuesday. Bye.